Hello everybody, so as you know for years I've been on about the defence forces and as we see across Europe and across the world tension is growing and we do have to be honest with ourselves there is a conflict, like a world war will erupt probably within the next 10 to 20 years hopefully not but it's most likely we see with Taiwan at the moment China will most likely invade the island sooner or later we see in the west with Russia tensions there we see in the middle east too something could have worked there again the world is um at a boiling point and uh we have to worry about defending ourselves defending our nation uh, and particularly because we're back in the we seem to be long way back in the 60s in terms of defense uh we're not a modern defense force we're way back 60 years nearly um back in the old, old tactics and stuff and obviously the feds has changed uh, a lot since then days, since be after the second world war in the 50s or 60s that's where we are basically we even had a lot more personnel and stuff which i believe in the 60s and 50s when the country had no money and we have, we have loads of money for everything under the sun for bringing everybody from timbuktu etc etc but there's no money for the feds for the first time in a long time it's a billion year which is good but to be totally honest again it's been neglected for years the defense forces uh, it would nearly have to be five billion a year to be totally honest. I know it's a lot to to look for and to get, uh, but it is because it's so. But we all know what they want. We we'll get into that in a second. But there's a lot that could be said. But the public accounts committee yesterday came out with it. The defence forces lost uh, fifth of its personnel. So you think about it, the Irish defence forces isn't that big. It always was around ten to fifteen thousand active, like not was all around, but active paid members of the defence forces, both in the navy and the army and the Corps. Um. And now it's something like it's from ten thousand or so eleven thousand I think, uh, in two thousand two thousand two thousand fifteen or so like that, uh, we're down to about seven thousand or so in the defence force. Go maybe going down to six thousand, because see the problem is there's a lot more people leaving it. There's these figures we we'll say here, so eight hundred and ninety one, so nearly nine hundred if you take about nine hundred nearly thousand people have left, uh, like the like probably not even from retirement just left and said fuck the whole lot of it and I go and get a job in Tesco because that has happened people have left to literally go and walk at Tesco and that tells you all you need to know really that the willing like it's a lot of work to go into the army and the navy and the air corps you have to do a lot of training a lot of a lot of courses etc etc there's a lot of time it's a lot of effort and for somebody to say you know I want to walk in Tesco and not pursue a role in the military you know it's, it's a hard pill to swallow let's put it that way so 900, 891, so nearly 900, if you think about 1,000. If that, if that's in 2022, just to say. And last year was 755 plus. So whatever the plus means, it could be a bit more, maybe that could be 800. So if you think about that, that's nearly 2,000 people have left in the last two years. If you add that all together. So we've had 800, so basically 891, then you add 755 plus. Whichever, whatever plus means, it could be... 800 I suppose that we don't know last year and then if you had this year's numbers you could be looking at maybe 3,000 people maybe have left uh, and that's a lot for an army that was the size of 10,000 which makes sense because it is 7,000 or so now and uh, then obviously you kept retirements etc etc but a lot of people who are, uh, don't spend long to the and then they leave but again the way we should be looking at this um like, I do think the country's defence force, both the Navy and the Air Corps, should be 25,000 or 24,000. That's what it should be for the population. Uh, and I don't think, like, just having conscription and so I don't think that's the solution. Um, in other countries, where, like Finland and Norway, and them have conscription to the army. We've seen in Denmark, the introduced conscription for women, too, uh, for mandatory service. I, I don't think that'll work here. I think a professional army, uh, an army, as I say, 25,000, 24,000, a professional army that's well trained and well equipped, um, but obviously we have none of that because the the one thing that's holding this this the defense industry and I suppose Ireland's defense capabilities in this country back is the pay and conditions. Uh, as I say, people nearly get more working in Tesco. Uh, it's not a lot of money for, as you see, what happened in uh, Lebanon a few months ago, uh, with Private Sean Rooney was killed in peacekeeping out there and another soldier was wounded you know you're you're putting your life on the line you you dare you it's a tough job you know you have to be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice and it's it's a lot that your country asks of you uh, particularly again if you go out peacekeeping and it's very as we know peace in this world is uh, falling apart and it's important that uh, you know that Ireland has an active role in promoting peace around the world too of course that's why we do peacekeeping to try and 
see peaceful ways to try and walk with people um, to try and find peaceful solutions and stuff like that um, and obviously the defence force have a huge role in that obviously peacekeeping Ireland has the longest 60 years of peacekeeping we remember the Congo too uh, the Irish uh, troops in the Congo etc the, the hardship they were through you know it's a long service of peacekeeping around the world promoting peace not colonisation or anything it's about peace it's about promoting peace and helping communities building wells different things etc teaching kids in school it's it's an important role um, that Irish peace the Irish army does uh commit to and walk for um, but it is important again as I say tensions are rising across the world um, and it is important and I know we all know what they want the, the Irish government the European Union the what the European army they've set it out straight uh, the what the EU response unit which basically merely means the European army too they're trying to get that in by next year uh, they're going to promote they're going to appoint a European defence commissioner which basically means nearly that the Irish chief of staff and stuff basically is supporting it to a European Defence Commission, basically. And, they, and the Department of Defence here need to be supporting it to the European European Union's Defence Commission, which shouldn't be the case. Again, we should be able to defend ourselves. And that's what I'm saying here. This is the main thing. We should be able to defend ourselves as a free, independent country. Uh, we should be able to defend ourselves. And we see, and again, I could go over many kit but we do have to get into gear. Uh, here and we do have to try and get the money for the men and women of the defense forces to get them a proper wage a fair treatment um, because that, at the end of the day that's what will get the numbers up and we will get the, it will get the 24 25 thousand if we make it a really really good career that people could make a career out because at the end of the day we could say by being patriotic we love our country etc etc and there's men and women that are what to solve the defense force i know many of them um, but it's it's the pay, it's the conditions. That's what's getting them. Because at the end of the day, they have families. They want to have children. They want to own a house. They want to have a car. They have bills to pay. They generally do have bills to pay. And it's not that they don't love their country. They don't want to, they're willing to die for their country to say to protect this st- state. Um, it's the fact of the matter they do have bills to pay. They have child's ways. You know, and when you have that, you know, really your family comes before the nation, really, in a way. And I don't blame the members of the Fed forces for doing that. Um, because the government are letting them down. But we all know they want a European army. They want Ireland to be a NATO. They're, they're jumping up and down. But I do think we have the capability of defending ourselves if we do put the resource. And again, there'd be a lot of money, I know. Uh, but for years, we should have spent money under the Fed force. We shouldn't have cut it to the, to the bone, basically. Uh, and that's what's happened since the financial crisis in 2008 we've cut it to the bone army barracks after army barracks were closed so many people laid off in the defense so many people left the defense forces after it. Calvin army barracks used to be open it's not open anymore it's modern army barracks it was left abandoned etc etc um many things like that contributed to it and we see and i want to just briefly mention that the oef have to protect the irish skies the royal air force um because we have no fighters like uh, no fights with the shoot down anything. Now we do have um some man pets and stuff like rocket uh red lot just to shoot down things, but we do need fighters. Like we're the only probably country in Europe that doesn't have any kind of fighter capability. And I'm not talking about a huge air force like that, but we at least if we had ten or so, and I know the huge expenses about hundred and something, maybe we could be spending three hundred or four hundred million of them. I know it's a lot of money to spend but we don't we're relying on another country that used to occupy us used to own us the united kingdom to defend us and again as a neutral country uh, we shouldn't be asking a nato country to defend the irish skies over our country it should be we should have our own defense capabilities to defend if necessary uh, and again it's not about taking the fight to any other country it's about defending our shores defending our people uh, we're not talking about going to war with China or what we don't want to get involved. Um, it's not Ireland's fight. Again, for years, as we see in the First World War, Irish people just left in the front lines for fodder. Uh, and that's what Ireland would be if there was a total war. We just put in the front lines and loads of Irish people like myself would be slaughtered in a fruitless battle that wouldn't have any benefit to the state of Ireland. Um, and it'd be just huge slaughter, a huge amount of young people being sent to the slaughter. Uh, for no reason really, for no, for no reason, just for people's prides, persons' prides, etc, etc, the egos, etc, etc, and the military-industrial complex uh, of the world too. Um, but again, we do have to have our own capabilities, and again, we don't at the moment. 
But we do have to take the Fed series because like, in, I hate to be down on. I hate to, you know, um, be negative, I suppose, in a way. But there is something brewing on the horizon. We do know about this. There definitely will be a conflict between either Russia, the West, China. Like China eventually will attack Taiwan. It will happen. It's, it's when. It's when. It's not if. It's when. When it would happen. Um. So it will eventually happen sometime. We see in the Philippines too. The, the Chinese Coast Scouts are infringing. The, again, there's a lot that could happen. Uh, the world is a dangerous place it is and we're only a small island um, but we should have the best defence capabilities to defend ourselves if anybody wants to mess with us uh, and make them suffer really if they do come uh, knocking and again that's the reason why I say conscription wouldn't work as simple as that it wouldn't work but having a good professional army that's well equipped etc etc because again you have to remember if conscription was brought in here First of all, it would be a huge amount, it would be billions extra in the Fed spend it, because it's, you have to train people, to take people out of society. Take, for example, when you're 31, you get conscripted, both men and women. You have to pay for the men and women to go to the army. You have to pay for their training, bullets, fire, and etc., etc. It's a lot of money. So we're talking about maybe an extra 6 or 7 billion in the Feds every year. Uh, when you could have a professional army that's well-trained and well-equipped, um, because again that's what you need you need people that are well trained and well equipped uh, more than just only jo Joes that go back into civilian life maybe after five months of training uh, I don't need to forget everything to be totally honest uh, you know it, it just simply wouldn't work uh, so that's why it's good to have just a professional army and then obviously have reserves too because uh, the country's reserves is not not capable at the moment it's only 1,000 about 700 maybe 2,000 if we're lucky uh, to call up um, if we need to be which is not enough too but um, again you couldn't really ask people to volunteer to for the feds so again there's a lot of training there's a lot of effort it's, it's a lot of time um, but again there's a lot could be said but uh, as I say we shouldn't have the way after defending our skies uh, but we do have to take the feds seriously and we, we shouldn't be pushing the feds especially as a neutral country we shouldn't be signing up for any EU defence pact or anything that. We should, we're our neutral country or we shouldn't be signing up to uh, EU army or X, Y, etc. Because Fianna, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael really, really want it. Uh, so we really tell them no. Because we, want, we don't want to fight in another war across the continent. Uh, and if somebody comes to our shows, we will fight them, of course. But um, until they appear, you know, we won't go anywhere to fight. We, we will defend ourselves. Um, and that's the beginning and end of it. Thank you.